Hello everyone. My name is Salah Al Bashir. Welcome on board and thank you for joining our biology world. My hope is that by the end of this session you have a new uh, appreciation for the classical and modern versions of the cell theory and will continue your education in biology. I hope you enjoy all our biology sessions. Lean, Mayar and Faris will work with you and will sincerely help you to understand all lessons. Cytology is an essential branch of biology. The term cytology drives uh, from two words, cyto, a prefix that means cell or related to cell, and ology, a suffix uh, that means science or related to science. Cytology is the science of cell. It deals with the cell structure that means the anatomy and the function which means the physiology of the cell as well as the relationship between cells and the organisms. Another term that is important to be known, cytologist. The cytologist is the scientist who studies cells. The cell theory is a bridge that help us to understand the relationship between the living organism and its cells. It has been developed over time. The term cell was firstly described by Robert Hooke when he published his book Microgravia, 1665. He observed a box-like shapes while he was examining a cork specimen. Hooke named such structures cells. He meant to say that they look like cells or rooms in monasteries. He used a simple light microscope with the magnification of 30x to examine his specimen. However, the discovery of the microscope led to uh, the evolution of the classical th cell theory. A breakthrough has been made by a Dutch scientist known as Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who developed a new microscope with a magnification of 300x. Such magnifications allowed him and then the scientist after to visualize living cells like protozoa, bacteria and RBCs as well as sperm cells of animals and human. The two first concepts of the classical version of the cell theory Uh, living organisms are made up of cells and the cell is a basic unit of life um, has been accredited to uh, the work of two German scientists Theodor Schwann and Matthias Jacob Schleiden in the, the 1830s after comparing their works in both animal and plant cells. 
However, some limitations of such two postulates emerge. Firstly, the first two postulates did not explain how new cells formed. Secondly, they suggest that new cells were formed in the classical ones. However, this led to the rise of the spontaneous generation theory. Rodolf Virchow in 1855 added a third statement that cells de uh, de descends from pre-existing cell through cell division. However, there were some evidence that the idea had been plagiarized from the work of a Polish scientist known as Robert Remark. The good thing of the latest concept that it is challenging the spontaneous uh, generation theory and the latter theory was no longer valid. The three postulates of the or statements of the uh, classical version are the beginning of the rise of the modern version of the uh, cell theory. Uh, the three postulates stated that living organisms are made up of one cell or more. All living cells arise from pre-existing cells by cell, by cell division. The cell is the basic unit of uh, structure and function in all living organisms. And since the rise of the classical theory, microscope technology has been improved, allowing for more detailed observations that have led to new discoveries about cells. Uh, as a result, four additional statements were added to explain the molecular level of the cell, which explains the relationship between the activity of the organism and his cells. And those four statements or postulates or concepts are Number one, the activity of the organism is the result of the sum of the activities of its independent cells. The second, or number two, all life metabolic processes take place in cells. That means all type of biochemistry or, or biochemical and energy flow uh, processes are taken inside the cell. Third or number three, cells contain the genetic code, the DNA, which they pass to their descendant during cell division. Cells are fundamentally, and the last one, which is number four, cells are fundamentally the same in chemical structure in organisms of similar species. So those four statements or four concepts added a lot to the uh, 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 cell theory and explain uh, many uncovered uh, questions and problems and they give uh, explanation of many things that is related to the cell and the organism and how they work from the uh, structural and uh, uh, functional point of views. However, 
there are some exceptions that the cell theory cannot explain. For example, viruses. Viruses lack protoplasm and are made only of DNA or RNA. The modern theory cannot, or even the classical theory, cannot explain why this happened and how this happened. Bacteria and protopla, uh, uh, bacteria and uh, blue algae have no nucleus because both of them are prokaryotes. But still, the uh, cell theory cannot explain this even after the addition of the uh, four statements. Uh, the synthetic hyphae uh, of the fungus are multinucleated and accepted. And this is also cannot be uh, justified using the uh, seven postulates of the um, cell theory. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, the cell theory, uh, whether it is the classical one or the uh, modern one, uh, both of them add, uh, are added value to the cytology science and to biology uh, in general. And they help more uh, to go through the uh, cell and the relationship between cell and uh, cell structure and function and also the relationship to their um, um, organisms. Uh, by this, we finish the first session. Thank for listening. Thanks for listening and have a good day. Please, if you uh, like this video, give us a thumb, share the video, and we are looking for your comments and your questions.